there are three scenarios where you can come across into supplier collaboration. So first thing is, uh, you have got a partial information about an item in the catalog item. So you find out uh, into the description, but you are not sure, for example, there is an item uh, which is mentioned in the catalog item, and you do not know whether that item, uh, you want to get additional information, whether the packing cost is included in that, for example, I'm saying. In such cases, you can start enabling with the collaborator and get your questions answered before you place a purchase order to the vendor. In that scenario, you use the collaborating with the supplier and get the item description clarified, and then you place an order. That is first scenario. In the second scenario, in the second scenario, uh, where your company is having a policy for certain category of purchases which you are procuring, they expect that you get the quotations from three minimum suppliers. In such case also, you can incorporate this bits policy, n bits policy. Once you incorporate n bits policy, the PR automatically stops you if you select certain commodity code and ask you to enter three collaborators. In such scenario also, you can do enable collaboration. In third scenario, where you want to purchase bulk quantity. For example, the price which you have received is a unit price. Unit price, for example, I'm saying 1000. So you are placing an order for 10,000 quantity, which is a bulk order or which is a highest uh, quantity. So you are giving a highest business. So you want to expect additional discount for this particular order. In such scenario also, you use the collaboration feature. So get your uh, pricing renegotiated so that you get you can get some discount from the vendor in such scenarios or any other business scenario you can use this supplier collaboration some in some of the cases where you do not have a sourcing solution available you can treat this also one of the feature of a sourcing but you won't get additional features like project management reviewing the previous details what is the quotation earlier they have provided uh, those kind of details is not possible, but you can, a small sourcing project kind, you can able to do, achieve using this supplier, co enable collaboration method, supplier collaboration or enable collaboration. And also, during this process, you can also create a new supplier also. It is not necessary that existing supplier, there is also one parameter is enabled. There you can also create, invite a new supplier. So the supplier will get an invite link so with that, he will able to register and respond to your buying and invoicing solution. Now, I am going to show you on the screens. Currently, we do not have this access enabled in uh, current project. So I have taken uh, from another project and I'm sharing the screen how it will look like. So you go to purchase requisition screen and click on create non-catalog item. You will get enable collaboration on the right hand side. Once you click on enable collaboration, then that purchase requisition will go in collaboration mode. Then you enter the minimum details, whatever you know, which purchase organization you belongs to comes from your so user profile. If you want to change, you can change it and provide the description. What is the commodity code? How much quantity you required? What is the price? Known information. Even if you see here, quantity. Okay. This is a compulsory, so price, whatever the known price we can enter. Then, once on the supplier information below the screen, so you will be having a supplier enabling. And the supplier first screen, it will tell you whatever the suppliers are added into the requisition. There is a possibility you can automatically bring in suppliers, preferred suppliers into purchase requisition by enabling, enabling certain feature. When you select this particular commodity code, automatically those suppliers which has preferred in your company will be automatically populated in purchase requisition. If the feature is not enabled, you need to manually select. In this case, you see invited suppliers are none is there. In that case, you click on change on the supplier uh, information, then you will get the below screen. So what is below screen? Add new supplier. So uh, currently selected is zero. Once you click on add new supplier, then you will get a list of all the suppliers available in your portal or your buying no solution. Wherever you are having suppliers enabled, you just need to select those suppliers. For example, I have selected two samples, supplier, Staples and Gregner. So these two suppliers have been added. Then I am going to do a collaboration. I am going to get the prices from these two suppliers. 
once you have selected this supplier and click on ok complete your cart or which is nothing but where this line item is ok then you will go in and to enter your details and click on submit so you can see on the pr screen the number will be generated with pr number pr one triple nine six seven so just test one and also on the right hand side you will be seeing number of suppliers have been imp uh, uh, invited and you will also get the option collaborate with suppliers for this item is yes and under the bidding type you will also have open bidding closed bidding other options similar to your event also where you want to uh, the get show the prices leading and other details you can do that activity or simple procurement you just get the prices from them and accept one of the proposal once you click on ok now system will drive you the approval process based on your collaboration you see here so this is a typical approval flow submitted first it will go to the finance department so then it will be in supplier collaboration active mode then purchasing agent has to submit once that at this stage the supplier collaboration will completed so after that it will go a normal regular process of your approval for whatever you are having so the first pre enable collaboration and until end collaboration is completed the normal pr approval flow will be followed then at this stage where uh, the two symbols were there right collaborating symbols after this stage is completed the rest of the process flow is normal purchase requisition when you are submitting purchase requisition whatever the come approval flows have been configured those approval flows will be re-triggered because here this process is to get collaboration with the supplier if you are having an approval flow that will be taken care if you do not have an approval flow then until collaboration is completed the new approval flow will not be triggered okay now uh, with this once you have completed this is a regular process how you submit your pr so the same way you are going to submit your pr and once pr is approved all the necessary approvals you can see one person is added as a watcher there are three pending so these people procurement desk agent some production planning team and some other approval is required once these three people approves it then watcher he don't need to approve he will be just seeing or getting a notifications for the progress of this pr once this is done at the last stage the watcher will receive now all the people have approved the pr is going into the next stage so then pr will be processed so pr uh, pr once it is completed then you will be getting uh po generated and sent to the supply that is our regular process now we will move on to the next topic user manager again user manager i do not have an access so i'll be showing in the screens so one of the uh main administration area will be user manager where you are going to manage sap ariba users in your ariba buying and spend management solution so as you go to the core administration user data generally will be available in core administration for example you have taken only upstream solution you have not taken any downstream solution that means you have subscribed only for uh sourcing contract management slp then this user manager will be available in your administration area you won't get the option to click on core administration also other than that cases wherever you are having core administration as well as upstream administration then user data will be available in your core admin only so once you click on core administration and you see the left hand side user manager access so which content of users other user info groups data import and export delegations okay these functions you can use to manage your user management the first tab users will allow you to import users and look for whatever the current users available in your spend management other user information will give you other information like whether the user is assigned any p card or whether user is having what is his default plan and default delivery location all that information you will find under other insert information groups so groups in ariba is called roles where you are getting a permissions 
in uh, SAP terminology if you are asking authorization. So user for example to perform trans transaction code ME21, user need to have an authentication authorization to use that code. So the basis team will provide that. The similar way the groups will be roles in Ariba having certain roles you can able to perform actions. So again groups can be two ways you can add. So you go to the users and change the users and you will see the groups assigned to that user. You can click on add or remove and add some groups to the user. That way also you can do or you go to groups, find out the roles which is available in your system, change one of the rules. In the rules, it will also have the users currently available in that groups. Then you add the user into it. So either changing the user, you can assign additional permissions or go to the permissions and add users who are all need that access. Both the ways you can able to manage it. Then data import and export. If you do not have site manager access, you can access user manager related data using data import and export. Delegations is also a one of the feature which will be given only to the customer administrator. For example, in your company, one person went on a leave. He is supposed to take approval. He is an approver. So certain purchase requisitions waiting for his approval. So then user has uh, called that approver. Hey, can you please approve this PR? This has to go today itself. Then that user is saying, I am out of office. I will not be able to log in into the system. So what is the remedy here? Either he has to log in into the username and password in remote area and he can perform the action. Or he need to inform the management or IT team saying that I am on leave for so and so date. Can you please delegate my authority to someone else? Or a your manager or a super user or whoever having the authority, they will confirm you this user is so and so. Can you please uh, create a delegation? So customer administration will get that request through any of the channel. Then using this delegation, he can decide for which user, for how long and to whom you want to delegate. Then he can able to set the delegations in the Ariba on his own. The other method is doing a delegation will be in self-service menu, you can delegate your authority whenever you are going on a leave, you can do that self-creation of delegation. If that option is not there, let us see whether we have that option in Ariba. So here you will be seeing, yes, thank you. We are here. If I don't think we have discussed on the delegate authority so under user profile you will be seeing this delegate authority click on that suppose the one person is going on a leave for example buyer 7 he is going on a leave meanwhile he want to assign to buyer 8 his permission and he will put the starting date from today until tomorrow he or whatever the period he is going then he can put his reason why he want to delegate continue to notify me email approval request if you are saying this then during this period you will also receive a notification so that is for your recording purpose if you do not want to get disturbed then you will be removing it then click on next so here the customer administrator need to approve this user profile the changes to the delegation this can be configurable. Then click on next. So you can see this delegation from 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 and one submit. So now once you submit, so the user buyer 8, when he login into Ariba, the system will tell you, do you want to act as buyer 8 or buyer 7? So for example, you want to verify whatever the approvals are pending with the buyer 7 you want to take a decision then he will click on i will act as a buyer 7 so then he will go to the to do activities of that user and wherever the pr is there he can click and take an uh, he can submit his approval so he is basically acting on behalf of that other user and taking the actions so this way the delegation authority will work so you don't need to change for example in sap if you are having PR approval flows 
or PO release strategies, only that person only has to approve it or he has to inform basis that he is going on the leave. Then in basis, they need to change this user ID to some other ID during he come back that has to be done. But in Ariba, you can use the self-service system. Then automatically it will take care of your delegation without any doing any back job. And if user is forgot this activity to perform, then the option is given to customer administrator where he use the delegation authority and he give the delegation from person to person. Okay, now we are going to see some screens in user manager. So once you click on the click on users, you will be having the filters like this user ID. You can search with the user ID or a name or an email address. Then what type of users? Generally, you will come across two type of users in any environment, enterprise user or third party user. Basically, third party user access will be given to the consultant or outside the organization to perform activities like we generally get third party user access but in some cases to make it uniform you will be provided a login detail with the client then you will be acting as an enterprise user only also you can search the users which are all locked also so locked means they will not able to log in into the system and if there is a password getting three four times uh, then if the account is locked you will find when you click with the search as uh, locked and click on search you will find no means where there is no locked users only if you want to find out you can use that no option either means it will give both the results similarly active no so if the user is active you will be fine suppose if user is deactivated permanently he left from the organization his account will be removed and he will be in no or if you want to list all the users with both the conventions you can use uh, either option and click on search or you can click on list all to give all the users list which is available in your system you can also notice here you can create new user from the screen that is the reason we do not have currently now the user manager access otherwise you can create a new user in the user interface itself clicking on create user it will done now okay once i click on search and i want to manage that user for example i'm searching one user casual user id i know his email address i am searching for third party so the result has come like this casual user what is the name business email address what type of account is this and whether he is having a password when is his last uh, login whether currently is there any delegation is having okay so now here Suppose user got a lock, so then they might request you, hey, I got locked because of the wrong password entered. Can you please reset your password? Then you can enter that user ID of the person, click on this check mark, click on this generate password. System will show you one pop-up. In that pop-up, you copy the password and share that password to the user, and the user can log in with that password. Then system will ask you to the change password immediately. Then he will change the password and he will use the change the password hereafter for login that way you can use this one or under the actions you can click on edit and he will get additional access to this particular user what options he will be getting he will be getting edit option to change any of the detail maybe something wrong with the email address he want to update he can use this option to click on edit or he can also act as so customer administration will be given this permission to act as so why we act as suppose <coughs> uh, one of the requests which you have got saying that hey i am trying to submit a pr but i am unable to submit so user is saying uh, but you did not get such a query from any other user only one particular user is saying now you want to troubleshoot so two things is available one is when that the super that user is available you will be creating a conference call with the user or screen share session then you ask him to present and you will guide them suppose he is in different time zone or he is unable to do that or you want to perform then you can act as that user and test it whether it is uh, whether you will you then you will be acting as that user as a customer administrator you are acting as that user and you will perform or you can verify whether he is having uh, what is the issue he is having? Also, sometimes you want to check after giving roles to certain users whether they are getting the screen or not. 
for example you have assigned one of the user contract manager permission so with this he can able to search for some contract or he can able to create contract or he can look for the contract instead of asking the user you can act as that user and go to the screen and you can search on behalf of that user you can search the screen handle once you perform this activity you will click on stop acting as and it will return to your home page so where you do not need the login names and password of that user but you can act as that user and verify whether he has having necessary roles or not at troubleshooting purposes you can use this act as permission it will be captured in the audit log you can see real user and active user mm -hmm. in that way currently that uh, in i will show that so i am exiting this delete this request if you are asking how long period that user is active in a system and all i mean uh, which date he was activated which date he was logged then that is very difficult task which you will not get but you can find out if someone else is acting as that user even in all the document also when you go to the purchase requisition history purchase order history also you will be seeing real user let's see whether some okay first we will check uh, i will show you where you can see the audit log <coughs> everything will be time stamp if you are acting on something so when you go to audit log so here you can use effective user when you go to add or remove filters you can select real user also with this filter even type user manager or something you can select the system will give you all the details like here you will be finding for example if you are acting as a different user then real user who is the person and who is the effective user that way you can find it in the audit log second question how we will know if i am not acting somebody is acting as myself then i will not be knowing that was your question means then we will go to one of the pr i will go to the pr child realm i'm selecting any one of the pr so pr any pr you can take it when you go to the history you can see here user real user suppose if someone is acting as then you will be able to see buyer 7 here buyer 6 has been submitted on behalf of that i mean uh, if there is a difference in this user you will able to notice in the history also okay now so that way you can act as an administrator and to perform your activities generally we will be using this option in real time more because we want to troubleshoot some users we need to know how it is working once you fix the issue again you will go and verify also now locking suppose you got a mail from some administrator saying that hey we are having suspicious on this user please log it or someone is going away you will allow a uh, cushion time so until a uh, full handover is there you want to log, log that a user when you select that user and click on a log then that user will be locked and reset dashboard again where we are seeing that the tiles right contract management uh, uh, whatever the dashboard which you are seeing if you want to reset that user dashboard to the default setting you can do that maybe he has made some changes and he is unable to revert the changes then you use this option to reset his dashboard now i am going to show you for example uh, when i click on edit user in the first screen general information which will give you the user email address and other details which he want to correct under the groups it will tell what are all the groups he is assigned or he is having a permission here you can again once you click on edit screen when you are having a group name then system will give you option to currently available add users then click on save then he will be getting the permission to uh, those necessary rows which you have provided so this is about user side access which you will be having so if you are having any of the system where you are having access you can do 
uh, just we can make sure to practice it. Now I will show you what will be the screens of other user information. On the first screen where you are selecting on the left hand side users and when you are clicking on other user information then that is the screen which you are getting here other user information. Once you click on you will be seeing general, P card, ship to addresses, billing addresses and accounting information. If you want to edit any of these changes you can do that. Now we are going to see on the group step. So once you click on group similar to your user system will result all the groups, group name and group description. These two are simple. Once you click on any of one group, then system will give you junior. For example, I'm selecting a group name. If you list all, all the groups will be listed down. Once you say with the filter, with the typing of the group name and description, then you will get this option. Okay. Actions. Then once you click on edit group, then system will give you what is the description? Unique name. This is where you need to refer in anywhere you are doing activity. As a, if you remember, I have mentioned that when you are creating a PR uh, lookup files where a particular company code, part user, certain user has to be added into the approval flow, you need to give unique name only, not the description. So unique names comes from here. In this case, both are same. Junior procurement management and group name, both are same. In some cases, these two will be different. So there will be a space or there will be the group name will be the display name. Unique name is what system recognizes name. So we need to provide unique name in that cases. Okay. Now I know this is a group. So I know which unique name and group name. When I click on users, then system will show you who are all having in this group, who are all are having the access, all the users will be listed down. There you can click on add or remove button. So something like this save, it will come add. Once you click on add, you will be asked to select the users. Do you select the users and click on save? Then that users will be added permission. As I mentioned, you can assign roles in two different ways by changing the user and adding the roles or going to the roles and adding the users, whichever the preferred way you want to do it both the way the results are same only now i want to show on some information on the child group functionality okay so now groups so in above case also junior procurement manage this is basically a system group so, you can see here defined by system and it is replicated. That means it comes from the parent. I have taken a screenshot from the child. That's why it is coming. Otherwise, in the parent core administration, in the groups, you will see system group and you won't see this replicated. Then second is custom group. What is the advantages of using custom group and system group? In system group, the system will give you all these functionalities. Now, uh, I want to create a group, for example, procurement manager. This is not available in the system or maybe it is available, which is giving certain permission. But I want to create a different group. Okay, maybe in that case, I will say senior, senior procurement team. This is the group. But this group, if I, this is the group, I'm saying custom group. So I'm creating a group called senior procurement team and I'm adding users, add users into it. What are all the users who are having senior resources I'm having? I'm going to use user one, user seven, user eight. I'm just randomly selecting it. So I'm adding this user, but these users, whenever I'm adding, so they will get a permissions of procurement agent. This is system permission and procurement administrator receiving manager or invoicing manager. These are all system groups. I'm just going to create only one group and assign user users and all these people need to get this access. I don't want to individually provide them, but I adding into this group, they need to get this permission. In that case, you create a system group and under the child groups, you maintain this one. So that is the advantage of here, child groups. In the child groups, you maintain this thing, then system will inherit 
the permissions from this group again in your procurement agent group you need to go to the child group mention the senior procurement team then they will inherit the permissions from this and simply instead of adding each user with these different roles you use the custom developed roles to uh, assign certain permissions to one particular group or we can also create onboarded or birth rights this is birth rights group which will be given to all the users which will have requester permission and purchasing agent permission something like that you can create your custom groups so to get this advantage and what is the third advantage will be in your approval flow for example if it is if the value of purchase requisition is greater than 10000 i want senior procurement team to approve if the value is less than less than 10000 then i want junior procurement team to review so here i am not using system created groups but i am using my own created groups so this will be having these three users any one of the user can take an action and uh, similarly i am going to create one more junior team where i am going to add for example in this case i am going to add junior procurement team i am just giving a random example you can use any such scenarios to utilize this custom group creation user 5 user uh, 10 user level okay so then whenever in approval flow these are all custom groups so if in the custom group if i do not maintain child then that will be used only for approval process approval purposes only and if you want to give permission then you need to add them in a uh, system group then they will be getting the permissions to act as Uh, sorry getting additional roles by adding into that particular group this way the custom group will help you in determining additional roles and also using in approval processes generally okay. when you are creating a custom group you unique, unique name you will mention for example you are replicating procurement agent which is a system group then you want to use the same group and do your own customization In that case we will add cus, cus underscore procurement agent or the other recommended method will be suppose you are using your company called uh, infosys then infosys underscore procurement agent or maybe some other company dell dell underscore procurement agent just to uh, i mean just to make it uniform that this is a custom group which will follow whatever the permissions of a procurement is then you define the name as like this so though we do not have access to this user manager and other activities by site manager we can perform all the activities also i'll go to core administration data import and export import users okay here when you are performing this activity all the users will be loaded into the system when you click on completed you will be seeing one record got created this way also you can do that but i strongly recommend not to do this because we will be losing the system they are monitoring if any new users being added by the last import or something then our account will be removed so when you go to the export similarly you can export current users available in the system i will just click on current export so here it will give you combined user export this is the file which is defined password adapter local id purchasing vanilla delivered to originating system supervisor default currency management level unique name so this is what i was referring unique name fg user is a unique name but the name of the user will be does not have so this user test will be 
unique name for the user test ARB. Krunal is having a username called Krunal. So whenever you are using an approval flow, you need to give this name to reference the person of this name. That is unique name, purchasing group, general ledger, name, company code. And do not expect the same file in your organization also, where if you are not using SAP uh, as your backend, then you will not get all this purchase group, general ledger, and additional company code, unique name and all may not come in your system. Depending upon your integration, the data will change. I will show you again on the system groups, whatever the groups which you are having. Purchase groups is different. Export user groups, not user groups. Okay, user consolidated. I'm exporting it. You can see a Arabia minus replicated system replicated. So Arabia minus mean whatever maintained in user interface. Replicated means which is coming from parent. System replicated means whatever uh, say replicated that also comes. I will be taking all. I'll clicking on OK. Here, you see here, simple, purchasing unit. Suppose your company is going by purchasing unit level uh, filtering, then you will get this purchasing unit. Unique name, suppliers, unique username, password adapter. For the uh, purchase group called suppliers, these are all the people having access. Now, I will select one of the... I will select the role procurement manager. So the procurement manager who will be having access uses unique name only you need to provide what is his path, uh, password adapter password adapter one is basically for enterprise users if it is a third party user you will be providing third party user i want to see procurement manager role was assigned to how many people about 45 records have been assigned 45 users have been added and i go here and i remove third party users so these are all the system users which is having access about 32 users and under third party users there are about 13 users are using third party users suppose you want to add permission to buyer 7 then you will simply come here so in this case buyer 7 is having this role already if you want to remove you will just simply remove this user from this one once you import the file then that pass that role will be removed or if this is not there if you want to add it simply you prepare a file like this i will copy this one i am pasting here and here i am going to give this access to buyer file for example and he is a third party user i need to make sure these two data existing in your system them, and even this one also need to be existing system when you import the file using groups purchase uh, uh, user consolidate sorry, group consolidated file then these people will get the permission so how we use that import export I have already shown when you go to import import user to group consolidated file click on that import then use update one list which means the data will not be created Okay, here you are seeing a difference. If you remember yesterday we were discussing, whenever you are doing that activity, 
read this sentence again update only modifies existing object if already exist in the data it is not created if you don't want to modify and don't include any data then okay same if you want to update details use this one and if you want to remove something then you use this file and choose the file and click on run cancelling it i am if you want to see the history how many times this load data got loaded you can see there is an error detail the password adapter is not maintained for buyer 7 can then it is not able to update it so buyer 7 is a third party user so they have loaded the file with password adapter so the system has thrown error he is not the person of that unique name then you need to change that and make that third party user then you can able to import it someone tried this in last time history will give you whenever the job is loaded how many records were updated created means newly created updated means it has updated and modified the data if you want to see the deformation click on view in some cases only we will give this details error details yeah so wherever the errors details are available in this case otherwise there is no way whatever the file was loaded cannot be taken from Ariba. So this access will be given to this uh, strict access will be given to the users. So only the people knows this functionality will be allowed to perform this activity. And by doing this, you're going to update the entire system. So whenever you are doing this activity in your company or in your production environment or in your test environment, always remember you take a backup of the existing file. So how do you take a backup? You will go to the export, same task which you are uploading, click on an export. Don't touch that file. Keep that file as is. Take a copy of that file. Then you do your workings, whatever you want to change, you want to remove the rows or if you want to add rows, you do on the copy of the file which you have taken, not on the file which is exported. Then you import that file and keep these files in safe. Suppose something got corrupted where the file you have loaded has an issue, then at least you can retrieve back. The Ariba is not showing this information anywhere in the system. If something goes wrong, then you are going to uh badly hit because there is no way the backup is available because it is a cloud it will get updated uh i don't think and the ariba is not maintaining any archiving or anything it is limited to your application so it should be very very careful not only this activity any activity which you are doing in import and export permissions make sure you understand with your senior who is next to you and check out if he's faced any issues in the data then you take always take a backup then you are safe if you are not taking a backup and upload then that will be missed 